the double. Three dimensions using the special art word groupie. We're going to draw the frog family today. They're Fred, Fanny, and Felicity Frog. And you're really going to enjoy creating this happy family of frogs. Later, when we get over to the Secret City mural, we'll put a horizon line, the ocean, and some clouds, really putting some shape to the planet. Two special guests are joining me today. Susan Bader of the Baltimore Museum of Art and Sharon Bloom of the Maryland Institute. They brought along some artworks for us to take a look at. I'm real anxious to see what they have for us. I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, so I'll tell you how easy it is to join. Now here's what you need to follow along today. Use your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, and your guest book to take notes on what you ought to look for when you visit your local art museums. Now, you got those materials together, and I'll be right back. fueled up and you're ready just to blast across this piece of paper. We're going to conquer this flat surface and draw in 3D today. We're going to use this word groupie. You see how we have the family of frogs grouped together? We'll use all seven magic words of drawing plus that important art word groupie. Take your hands and loosen yourself up. Get yourself all geared up, ready to draw. And we'll start with the grouping of the frogs. We'll start with a circle here. This is Fred. And then we'll put Fanny back here. And then, of course, the little daughter, little Felicity, down in this area. Now, these are, are the body masses. See how I sketch them in real roughly? And then we'll draw the legs down here. See how they taper down to the ankles. Here's Fred's body overlapping in front of Fanny's. And then we'll draw the legs back there. And then, of course, Felicity's legs. Now, for the eyes, we'll put the eyes on top of Fred. We'll start with Fred, and we'll really detail in the father frog. And we'll go back into the mother and come down to the daughter down here. I put a dome on top of the circle, and then I curve the eyes right here, and then look at this, this overlaps behind the other one. You see, we use these magic words, those seven magic words, all the time, along with these art words. Draw, and see how I leave a little reflection right inside that eye? Makes it look like the eye is really looking at you, doesn't it? Now, for the big smile, you know, they're real, they're, <laughs> they're a happy frog, and you saw them before, you saw they were singing songs, they're, they sing a lot, too. We'll make his mouth open. See, I put two grin lines right here. Give me a smile. Okay, smile big. See, can you feel that grin line right there? I have a mustache right here, but you don't have a mustache, but you have grin lines, right? Well, the frog has grin lines too. At least this frog does. Maybe not real frogs, but in my imagination, I'll give them grin lines. See, anything can happen in your imagination, right? I'll make it really dark back here. Oh, notice I used overlapping again right there. And then I'll draw the bottom of the lip. And then we'll draw the Fred's belly coming down right here. And then his arm will come out off his side. See, he doesn't have a neck and a different part, you know, head and a body. He just has one body right here with his arms and legs coming off of that. Draw the arm coming off like this. And then we'll draw the thickness of the arm, really thin arms. Draw the back of the wrist right there. Draw the little curve of the palm of the hand. And then draw three bananas for fingers. One banana, two banana, three banana. Wrap around like this, come down for the back of the leg, and the other leg right here. Now, you know, when you use grouping and drawings, you group, well, together trees, anything in nature, really, rocks, flowers, grass, forests, shrubbery, any kind of plants. You usually group them together when you're drawing, but when you're drawing people, you use grouping too, right? You very rarely just draw one person by themselves. Usually you draw groups of people together, either in towns or in cities or in little villages, just like my little drone village, or as Zebtron says, my Furby village. <laughs> okay, that was a good idea. Now I'm drawing the foot right here, curving the back, and then I'll use that magic word, which is surface. This near part of the foot is lower in the paper. See, it slants down in direction what? Direction, what is that? Direction one, direction seven up here, and then draw the top of the foot. He has a big foot, doesn't he? And then we'll draw the other side of the shoe, Direction what? Direction seven, direction one, and then we'll draw the other foot. 
Now, we'll very lightly draw on the body of Fanny back here. Here's Fred. And then see, Fred's arms will be wrapping around Fanny. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> oh, hello, Cindy. How are you? You brought me another gift. That's cute. It looks like Fred, huh? <laughs> Cindy, you're so like, every time you come in here, you bring me a gift. you know that? You might tell you the nicest green dragon in the whole universe. You have very soft hands, too. Okay. Do I get to keep this? Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll put it, actually, I'll put it behind my pin, so I'll never lose it. I can stare at Fred the whole time. You want to help me with my drawing, too? Huh? Okay. All right. Well, if you want to take some... You want to shade like you usually do? All right. Why don't you take your finger and blend the shading right down the left side? <laughs> You're, you're taking voice lessons, huh? Your voice is getting much better. Rock and roll. Not, can you say that? <laughs> you pick up really quick, Cindy. You learn fast. That's what I like about you. Besides the fact that you're really a cute dragon. I'm going to look at this, see? I'm going to draw another set of eyes for Fanny back here. What magic word is that? We can draw one eye in front of the other eye. Overlapping. Okay. And then we'll give... I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to make her mouth open because she'll be just grinning really big. She's in a real happy mood. She's looking over at Fred because Fred's a real handsome frog, her husband. <laughs> I'll give Fanny a, a bow in her hair, a little ribbon in her hair. And then we'll draw her feet back here, her legs. Give her some shoes, smaller shoes back here in the back then. Well, um, you know what? I'll make it a little bit lower so it doesn't look like she's so far up on the paper. And then we'll draw... The little daughter, Felicity, over here. <laughs> See, that's overlapping again, Cindy. I'm going to make her facing this way, so I made this eye overlap in, in front of the other eye back there. We'll give Felicity a big smile. Do you think these are cute frogs, Cindy? <laughs> they look like your little brother and sister, huh? <laughs> Cindy, you know, you're a really good audience. Even if I make a bad joke, you laugh, you know that? <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll try to make better jokes from now on then, okay? Well, you know what I'll do? I'll make the, the hand over here going up in the air waving. See that? See how I made the hand just sprawled out, just really loose and sketchy? One banana, two banana, three banana? You don't have to be keen. <laughs> you must have had a lot of green, green leaves for breakfast this morning. Got you all energetic, huh? Look at another really simple shoes right there. Don't have to get too worried about the detail of the shoes. Draw the mother's foot back here. Sketch it in. Okay. Should I put a little bit of color in here, Cindy? Okay, I'll make I'll make Fred green. I'm going to use shading on the left side. See, I'm going to use my finger just, just to add some tone to the color, to the frog here. And then we'll make her green, too. There's this green. See, just a little bit of color goes a long ways, but I'm going to use it as shading. Okay. A little bit on the fingers. You like that? Okay. I'll make him have purple shoes. I'll just color it. <laughs> Can I color you purple too? <laughs> See, well, you're contagious with your enthusiasm, Cindy. You come here in a good mood, you get me in a good mood too. Okay. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing a lot practice all seven magic words and the special art word to keep in your mind is grouping. <laughs> So I know you love to draw. Whenever you pick up your pencil and you start drawing, your enthusiasm just bubbles over, huh? Well, you know what I've done? Is I've organized a special club just for you. It's called the Secret City Club. And each week I want you to send me in a drawing or activity. 
Now this week's drawing is for you to create your own underground inhabitant, a drone of some sort, and you just create a little creature on a piece of paper, you put it in an envelope and you mail it into me. Take a look at this drawing right here by Reed. This is his idea of an underground drone. It looks like a really scary creature, but they're really nice, and you know what? They blow bubbles, <laughs> okay? That's what Reed told me. Now, when you finish your drawing, send it into the Secret City Club Post Office Box, 444 Moraga, California, 94556. Hi, I'm Sharon Bloom from the Maryland Institute, and I'm Susan Bader from the Baltimore Museum of Art. Sharon, today we've got two works of art that I thought might be particularly helpful to some of the club members in terms of the things Mark has been teaching mm -hmm. them. This is a photograph, right, Susan? Yes, it's by Margaret Burke White, American journalist, photographer. Right, meaning that she took photographs for, um, newspapers, I guess, newspapers, magazines. magazines yeah. Life magazine, among Life others. magazine. The old days, okay. pre-television. You know, I'm glad you brought a photograph with you, because I think a lot of people don't really consider photographs to be works of art. Oh, absolutely. We hit that all the time in the museum. They think, well, I can take a snapshot of somebody's birthday party, mm -hmm. and if I can do that, what makes a photograph so great? Anyway, right. because everybody's got cameras sure. and, and everybody takes pictures. Um, but there are some differences, I think, between somebody who takes pictures on their vacation and, and a professional photographer. And something like this one is, I think, very carefully thought out and planned. She didn't just happen across it and snap it. You know, there were things that had seemed to have to have been waited for, like mm -hmm. the light. There's a little bit of sun up there, almost none down there. You can almost see the, the blue against the white clouds, even though this is a black and white photograph. The, the really clouds are so rich. Grays on grays. Right. I think one of the things that's interesting about this, uh, in terms of what Commander Mark was showing before, is the kind of grouping that Margaret Burke White grouped the whole activity, really, mm -hmm. of the picture right in the middle. It's as if this old-fashioned tractor and, it, and the furrows that it has made in the field and these people were right there, just grouped. There's nothing here. There are no trees on the side. Mm -hmm. It's sort of limitless space to either side and limitless space out the back. That's right. You get that same feeling of, of it going all the way back into the distance as well as, as to the sides as well. And one of the things the commander was going to add later to the mural was a horizon line. Mm -hmm. And I think in this it's particularly interesting to think about how different the photograph would look if the horizon line were up here. That's right. You wouldn't have that same feeling of the fields just stretching on forever and ever. Mm -hmm. I think it's also interesting to look at this photograph in, in terms of it being a real horizontal uh, picture as opposed to a vertical picture, which is more like the second. Uh, Interestingly, drawing. what I brought for a second is a very vertical piece. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes that nice contrast with the trees on either side, sort of framing it up and down. The horizon line is cut off abruptly in between them, really. Mm -hmm. and there's just a little hint of space there. Now, this is not a photograph. This is an etching. It is. It's an etching that's about 300 years old, made by a man from Holland. An etching is, maybe we need to remind our club members, is a kind of printing process. Mm -hmm. It's one where an artist combines drawing with a very sharp tool on a metal plate and then letting, covering that drawing and letting acid eat through a wax kind of covering to soften some of the lines. So the, the acid actually eats away where the artist has drawn his lines. Right, so that the lines are less sharp and scratchy and more m muted. Mm -hmm. Now, artists used prints uh, really in the same way the photographer. Oh, in order to have more than one, right. sure. For right. all that time and effort that it makes takes to make one, I think the advantage is you could illustrate several books mm -hmm. or sell them to a lot of different people. It's cheaper to buy a print still than a big painting to hang in your house. That's right. Zeptron, how are Hello. you? I am fine. Good. <laughs> you? Very well. You were talking about photography? Mm -hmm. We were talking about photography. I have a, gotten a photographic component to my computer for Great. my birthday. I want to take oh. a picture of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. 
When do we see the pictures? It must be developed, not for a while, but I'm afraid it will not be a work of art like what you have brought. Oh, I well. don't know, Zebtron. I think you made a careful choice and some decisions. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How old is this etching? This etching is about 300 years old. 300 years old? Mm -hmm. A little older than you and I. My goodness. It, in many ways, is very similar to what Commander Mark does on his mural. It is similar, um, especially with what command, the commander was talking about today. We've got groupings. I think groupings is a really important word uh, to think about when, when doing a drawing or a painting. We see these groupings of the trees over here. And where else do we see groupings? The figures are grouped in front of the trees. Mm -hmm. There's another darker tree. Remember cross hatchings, Evan? Yes, I remember cross hatching. That's how they got that one so black, because if you cross hatch it so that your lines cross, the ink will stick in there even more than on a normal print. So cross hatchings really are a lot of lines uh, overlapping each other. It is really amazing it dark. that you can get so many lines to make it look so real. I have one disagreement, though. I think that my photograph of you will be a work of art. Oh. Oh. I have some really neat drawings to share with you today in the Secret City Gallery. These kids, they've controlled that flat piece of paper, they've conquered it using the seven magic words and all those special art words. Now look what Tom did right here in his drawing. He used overlapping for the mountains and foreshortening for the flag, and alignment for the airplane. Look at the nice roadway wrapping through there. The grouping of the buildings, see how they're grouped together at the bottom of the paper. Grouping for the mountains in the back, and even densities used there. Can you see all those elements of drawing used in that picture that he drew? You can get some ideas for your own drawings, huh? Let's look at another drawing. Look at this. Sharon Kim did this one. She even used color, and this is a neat idea. If you have some extra time, you can color in your drawing. This is of two superheroes flying through the space tunnel on her moonscape of her secret city. Isn't that a neat idea? A transportation system is kind of a fun item to, you know, you take your imagination and really go for it with it. Let's look at another drawing. Now here's an idea. Kevin Karn, he decided he wanted to do nine different drawings, but for some reason he wanted to save his paper. The Secret City mural is my chance to just explode with my imagination all across this mural. Now, I have the planet and I have the island, I have the moonscape. What I want to do is I want to connect together the planet today and I'll work on the moonscape, the moonscape over here some other time. The way I'm going to connect this is with a really nice horizon, like the one you saw in that photograph that our special guest brought, that really beautiful horizon behind the equipment. Now we'll put the horizon behind this island, kind of connect it all together. I'm going to use my pencil, lightly sketch in underneath the unibear, a real light line, and the planet's curving down. So I'll use this pencil and I'll curve it along, really light line, come over here. Curve it around, right, see how it comes right in front of the moonscape. This is overlapping because the planet's more dominant, and then we have a moon right here. We have two moons around the secret city. Here's the moon, and here's another moonscape over here. So there's our dark planet. You can hear it, huh? That's a loud planet, isn't it? Now I'll take my pen. I'll add that detail in behind the little unibear. Come across here. Make sure you take good aim on this round Secret City planet. I'm going to go a little bit above it and make sure it's lined up correctly. Draw the place of the ocean horizon. It's going along here carefully with the pen, curving down behind the planet. Curving along, back behind Unibear. And then later on, I'll finish this because I want to add some more details here later on. Right now, I'm going to work on this group of rocks over here since we're talking about grouping. I want to add a little rock. See, now this unibear is sitting here, and he's, his hook's kind of caught on the rock, but he thinks he's fishing, but he forgot that the hook has to be in the water, okay? You would never do that, would you? I didn't think you would. Now, this is in the water. Remember, this is all water around here. And then we'll draw another rock back behind you. See, I'm grouping these together. It makes it a little more interesting if you group your drawings together in just tight little groups like this, and maybe put some scattered rocks in other places along the, the planet. Now, which technique do you want me to use to shade the rocks? The cross hatching that our special guest talked about today, or I can use the scribble technique, or I could use the dots, or I can use the cross hatching. What would you like? The scribble technique? Okay. I'll take it and I'll just scribble the left side. And while I'm doing this, let's take a look at how the planet's beginning to take shape.
Notice all the different styles of shading and different techniques. And then I'll shade the left side here too. Now remember, all these ideas, you can use some of these ideas in your own Secret City, or you can take an idea and you can expand on it in 15 different ways, or even 20 different ways. Why you set a limit for yourself, <laughs> right? The sky's the limit with your creativity. And then a little bit more darkness between the rocks. And then I see a spot over here, and I want to connect... See, I like connecting things together, making sense out of the planet right now. I want to draw a trail coming from the little huts of the underground inhabitants along down here, wrapping around the magnetic trail for our magnet transportation system. So I'll take my pen, I pencil it in lightly, and I'll draw a real light, wrong pen. Got to make sure you have the real fine point pen for this. Come over here so I can draw it carefully. You see back here, the road gets really small, doesn't it? Now this is using one of those magic words of drawing. Remember what magic word it is? Let's see if Elmo, the king of cartoon, can remind you. Density, huh? It's a very important word. And you see how this gets smaller and smaller, and a little bit lighter, the road does, as it gets in the background. See how tiny these little huts are? Well, you know the inhabitants are a lot bigger than that. Because I made it real small and kind of hazy way back in the background, I use density. And of course, I'll make the grass hanging off the end back here. See, it adds a little bit more character, makes it look a little more flavorful for your eye. Now, my favorite part comes along when I take my pencil and I sketch in a way to connect this right here with the cliffs of the road. So I'll come in a little bit. See, later on I'll add the waterfall, and this will be the, the wall or the separation between the planet up here and the planet over here with the underplanet area. And the water, of course, is a big lake right here. Draw this right here. Now I'll take my pen and color in really dark underneath the inhabitants' homes to make sure you can see that overhang. Now this is kind of tricky. I should put some posts so I can make these into a stone cliffs that actually attach into the canyon over here. In fact, I think I'll do that. I'll make these into little cliffs hanging down using overlapping the cliffs here and make this into a kind of a rock cliff that gradually comes down and joins this part of the cliff over here. And then I'll color it nice and dark underneath here. And of course I need my shading pen. And since I use cross hatching over here, I'm going to continue that cross hatching down through these stones, this rock. And go in the other direction. You know, the ocean and the horizon line have fascinated artists for a long time, all through history. Now, in this scene, there's the ocean and there's a horizon line I particularly like. Why don't you take a look at it? <laughs> Once you visit your own art museum, your local art museum, and you get some great ideas, tons of ideas for your own drawings or your own secret city moonscapes and landscapes. I'm going to finish my cross hatching over here on the left side. It was really fascinating when the special guest told us how they used to take and carve out this cross hatching for prints. It took a long time. It's a lot easier just to take a pin and draw the cross hatching, isn't it? 
nice and dark along here. Oh, and this is my favorite part, of course. You have to put the overhang. See, I even grouped the tufts of grass in little groups. Here's a group of tufts of grass and a group hanging here, a little group over here, a little group of a village, a little group of unibears over here. See, I use grouping a lot in my drawing. Sometimes I use it even unconsciously just because it makes the drawing look better. After a while, you'll develop a kind of a taste for what looks right and what doesn't look quite right in your, in your drawing. Follow that intuition. It's a good intuition. It's an artistic eye that you have. I'll cross hatch along here a little bit more. <laughs> draw, draw, draw. Stay in a super positive attitude. Keep your energy up. Keep drawing. And I'll see you next time, okay? <laughs>